Welcome. Many of you have questions about the discs. Now, obviously, when you have pain, the first thing a physician would do is take an x-ray of the spine, send you out for an MRI or some other scan to want to know the pathology of what's going on in the disc. Because obviously, x-rays are only going to show the hard tissue. The MRI will show soft tissue. But the most important thing I want you to understand about the disc is that the discs are mainly composed of water. Also, as we get older, they don't have the vascularity and the circulation as it did when you were a baby. It loses that circulation, so therefore, there's not a whole lot within the body that can really change that disc, but diffusion. Diffusion means that it automatically diffuses in from a greater pressure to a lesser pressure, but diffusion works best when there's movement and motion. That's why we tell people that when you have an injury, the worst thing you can do is nothing. Because the old days, people had sciatica, pain going down the leg, or a pain going down the arm. And what did people do? The doctors were telling you to lay in bed, rest, and do nothing. We found out that it makes the problem worse because it slows the healing down. It causes muscle atrophy. It doesn't induce changes or circulation or osmosis or any type of metabolic nutritional change into the disc. To understand the disc is made up of several different elements, although mainly of water. It's collagen. And the outside of the disc has outside fibers called the annular fibrosis. The inside of the disc has a nucleus pulposus, the gel, kind of like a, uh, a, a soft gel inside of a donut. Now, obviously, as uh, the outside fibers of that donut become more brittle as it gets dried out, just like our disc, uh, the outside fibers can start to tear, causing the inside nucleus to protrude out, causing it to herniate, putting pressure on a nerve. Kind of like sticking your, your finger in a marshmallow that would kind of be like a bulge coming out of the other side of the marshmallow, a bulging disc. But if your finger goes through that marshmallow and it starts to tear on the other side, we would look at that as a herniated disc or a ruptured disc. But the big question that people say is, what about my disc? Can I get my disc back where it was before? Well, first of all, I want you to look at the analogy as a, a, a tire on your vehicle. You got brand new Michelin, brand new Toyo, whatever tires you have going on. Uh, in your car right now and you're driving around, it drives fine, all of a sudden your alignment's out just like your alignment may be out in your back or your shoulders or your bad posture and now you start seeing a lot of wear and tear in those tires. Now you see a lot of wear and tear in those discs but unfortunately you don't feel any symptoms in your disc until you look at the x-ray and say hey wow my disc has degenerated but it hasn't affected the nerve yet so you have no symptoms until the later phases but my my point I want you to look at, the analogy here, is those tires that have worn out, you can replace the tires, but the problem is you can't replace the disc. Now, there are a few cases they talk about disc replacements, but that's not for you. That's for more severe situations, and most people are not even candidates for that. But you're not going to start replacing discs because that's surgery. Bottom line is, if you start doing anything invasive to your body, you're looking for potential problems or trouble, not only from the doctor, from anesthesia, from other complications infections, etc. So the question here is, that disc that degenerated, can I get it thickened again? Well, you're not going to like to hear this, but the answer is no. Now, people are going to say, well, I heard you can get that disc to grow back. It cannot. Uh, this is, doesn't have the vascularity. This is cartilaginous tissue. Uh, there's nothing really to allow it to grow. Uh, discs just don't, do not grow. And then you're going to say, well, what about traction? Will that help it? Well, yeah, it may, it may get pressure off the nerve when you're doing the traction. It may help reduce the inflammation, but degeneration is there to stay. Arthritic changes, just like a joint, is there to stay. Disc degeneration is there to stay. The problem here is that when you get disc degeneration, like, for example, down low, if this disc continues to get uh, thinner, the vertebrae come closer together and the holes where the nerves come out become smaller. Having, allowing you to have more irritation on that nerve. So it all boils back to proper bowel mechanics. That poor posture is going to cause more quicker degeneration called spondylosis or arthritic changes or degenerative joint disease or degenerative arthritis or whatever you like to call it. It doesn't make a difference, but the bottom line is that as discs become thinner, the vertebrae become closer together, and then we start developing what we call osteoblastic activity, more spurs, more calcium. Uh, it just starts to look messy and ugly. So, from your perspective, when you have degeneration of a disc, what do you do? Well, the most important thing is you've got to get back to basics. How did it degenerate? Are you overweight, putting more stress on it? Are you lifting incorrectly? Did you have a trauma? Are you doing things repetitively? You know, like you can have thinning of a disc, all types of arthritis, and you keep looking down. That extra weight bearing of that head 
being 12 pounds for each inch you go forward, an additional 10 pounds. You know, you're, you're three inches forward, you're 42 pounds of stress, and it's trying to withhold that stress. So you're going through all this degeneration, wear and tear of the disc, disc herniations, pinched nerves, all kinds of problems and pain. You gotta get to the root of the problem. You, you have to slow it down. Understand as we get older, we're all gonna have weaknesses. You know, you take, if you're a runner, and you notice you can't run like you used to, guess what? Well, you're gonna walk faster, you're gonna do something different, but you gotta make a change. You can't keep running if that's causing your problem. So I hope this makes my point across to you so you can understand uh, what this is all about. This is not just treating a, a thin disc or a degenerated disc. This is, this is looking one step beyond that, what's causing it? And if you don't stop what's doing, what's caused it, it's gonna keep getting worse. So don't look for the quick answers, the magic pill, there is none. If there was a pill that was so magic, you won't be able to afford it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share it and subscribe if you haven't so you can continue to receive more education and self-help videos. Uh, most important, I ask you to make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.